Hello ladies, welcome to Homemakers Radio. I've designed these videos for you to listen to mainly, so if some of you think they're a little long and you fall asleep while you're watching, they're really not for watching. There's not anything to see here. They are designed so that you can go and do your housework with some kind of radio program in the background. Remember the olden days when we used to tune into the radio while we were washing dishes and doing something that was repetitive to kind of pace us along and give us some something to listen to while we go. But before you go about your work and about your daily, I want to show you the teacup and the, of the day, and it is a Royal Albert that my friend Amy sent me. And so thank you, Amy. It's the only blue one that I have that's this beautiful dark blue, royal blue, and I really like it. And I had got this out of my china cupboard, and uh, goodness sake, there was a, a blue ribbon in there. One of my little grandchildren made me a blue ribbon, and last time that he was here, he put it in this teacup. I got a blue ribbon for something. I, We had all been to a county fair at one time, and they had entered some things and gotten some blue ribbons, and so they were excited about that and were giving me blue ribbons for everything. And I'm finding them all over the place. They're just cut out of, cut out of cardstock. Uh, there's another little one in here, and it says first prize. I don't want to make you jealous. That's just the way it is here. Okay, so you can uh, go about what you're doing now because there isn't anything else to see. I'll call you back when I have some things to show you. And look at these miserable notes I've written <laughs> for you today. But I got dressed up for you. Of course, when I get back at my work, I will be putting an apron over this, maybe even changing. But I got into my closet because I'm cleaning some things and kind of culling and getting back down to what I really need. And discovered that there were some dressy things in there. There's this little dressy blouse. I don't know if you can tell. It's got some sparkles on it. And I decided to just go ahead and wear it because there, there's nowhere to go right now. And I have come here to talk to you. And if I had a little class in my home and I invited five of you over and I was going to just give you some homemaking inspiration, I would dress up for you. So I'm dressing up for you today. I may dress down a little bit later on when I go about my grueling jobs. <laughs> now, so today I want to help some of you who are not very well motivated, who, who haven't quite got that stirred up within you. Uh, you know, that reminds me of, uh, will you see the word stirred up in the New Testament? Can you tell me where that is? It's where Paul, I believe, was talking to the young preacher Timothy and urging him to stir up the gift that was in him. And so uh, dressing up kind of stirs up uh, a feeling of recrea recreation and renewal. That's what it does. If you're not motivated, I would like you to go and get your shower or your bath and put on something really nice. Fix your hair, fix your face, uh, put on a little, um, a little scent. Uh, maybe even if you have a scented candle like that and then Get your list out. This is what this is for. You get these at the Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of three or four. And make your list and of what needs to be done. But I think that, like I'm all dressed up today, well, what I did today was something that they used to do in the olden days. I have read a lot about the Victorian era, and the uh, woman of the house would sit at her desk. They all had these little secretary desks. and She'd sit at her desk, and she'd write down, uh, a list to send uh, one of the hired help to the store to get her things. And then she'd make another list of things that needed to be done in the home and, you know, pass it out to whoever got up. She was all dressed up. And then when it was time for her to do something, why, she would be a little less formal. So I got all formalized today to sit down and write my, my terrible notes to you uh, because it gave me a sense of purpose and a sense of, of, uh, something very formal going on and it motivated me more. The more casual we get, I think the, actually it's so sad in a way, the more casual we get, sometimes the more depressed you'll get. You'll notice with the little children, at least I did, is when I dressed them up, they perked up. They were happy. They were uh, energetic and creative, creative. So get out your clothes and put on something really, really nice that you like to sit down and write your your list and this might change might change into something else later on but get motivated that way and get ready um, 
So it'll give you a purpose, a recreation, and renewal by the way that you dress. Now, I have also, besides this, now I'll write down my list, and then I stick it in my bigger book. You can get these at um, all kinds of stores, even the Dollar Tree, just a competition book, composition book. And I stick my daily work note in there. And this is full of lists for a master list. And like I have a master list for what I want to do in my own life, in my sewing room, in my kitchen, in my things I'd like to do in my kitchen, including different things I'd like to try to make for, you know, food, meal preparation. And then I have lists of things that need to be improved in the actual house itself, walls that need to be repaired and painted, and things that need to be done. I also have a hospitality list, things I'd like to do for other people, and projects that I, I have. A, I have a project page, and so you keep all these pages here of things you'd like to do. And when you make your list, you, you point, you write down one thing that is on one of these pages. You might want to try one of these pages, one of these things. And so you can get one of these. And so some of you that are rather demotivated, uh, and it's easy to do. It's easy to do. And I've noticed something, too, is the more you sit, the more you lay, and the more you sit, the more deeply depressed and demotivated you can get, except in some cases. Now, if you're real tired, I have noticed this with myself. I can just, my feet will hurt, and I'll be very tired, so I'll get in a reclining chair and sit for a while, have a cup of tea, and actually the energy starts to come back, and the ideas start to come back, because I'm sitting there looking around, and the creative juices start flowing. So... So at least, please, even if this does not work, immediately, this little talk, go and get dressed and find out if, take note of when you're feeling you're most motivated. You know, that's what the reason, you know, keep a book like this. They have a separate page to record the times when you feel the happiest and the most motivated. Go and write it down. What did you do before? What did you do after? What are you wearing? What's the circumstances inside of your home? And I don't mean to be, uh, I'm not any kind of professional at this. I am just sharing with you my own experiences. But Lizzie, everybody is different. And so not everybody's going to be inspired by the same thing. You're not going to be inspired by my style or the things that I do, but I'm sharing it with you. So you have something to listen to while you get something done. But so don't take it all too seriously. Don't try to emulate me exactly. You've all got your own uh, style, your own preferences and the things that inspire you. I'm just going to share with you what inspires me and what has helped me. And I'm sharing some of my observations over the years of dealings with people. And I am, I am sharing it for also the record for my children. I still have all these videos on my PC that I could maybe do something with later on. So I'm doing it for the record. And if the, if, uh, the internet gets shut down, it's possible you could still get what I've recorded some other in some other way because I've kept them all and I'm not dependent on YouTube. So dress up for recreation, 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 and renewal. That is, you know, sometimes one of my children will just be having a whiny bad day and I said, why don't we just go get a bath, wash your face, and, and, and let's get in some clean clothes, some different clothes. And... Then we would come out and have a, a little tea party, a cup of tea, some crackers and cheese, and, and that helps. You know, instead of standing there scolding everybody for being in a bad mood, why don't you uh, provide them a way? You know, I always hate to be uh, too negative with people without having an alternative. So I, I don't go around correcting everybody. I try to find, unless I know there is an alternative. You know, a good salesman doesn't try to... Um, Tell somebody that they have a bad product and uh, that brand is no good unless they've got something to replace it that they want to sell you. So that's the way we do is unless you're going to give somebody some, something positive, there's no point in running them down for doing something negative. So take some time and go and refresh yourself. And there's no use going around looking like you have one foot in the grave. You can you can look good no matter what your age. This is for young people, too. This isn't for a women of a certain age. This is because we're all interacting together. And the Bible says the older women are to benefit the younger women. The younger women are to treat the older women like mothers. And we all have, uh, 
we can all get some kind of uh, encouragement from each other. We're supposed to build one another up, even in the home. So one of the things that, uh, so sit down with your notepad, get that all ready. First get dressed up and then come to your, if you have a little desk or you have something that you could use as a desk, and that's another goal you might write down in here is create, create an office or create a desk area. My ideal desk area is something in front of a picture window uh, with a beautiful garden in front, something that I can see so that you're not locked into a little cubby hole that has no just walls you feel like you're in prison so get your get your list ready after you get dressed up get your list ready and you can pause this video and call me back so next is um, so that's to motivate you and I learned something about the word impossible you could be sitting there in a tiny little shanty and um, like I am in the manse I've made the manse look massive massive <laughs> I've made it look huge. I've got all these little nooks and crannies, and they're my, they're my office, and they're my library, and it's my music room, and it, and it just little each little section is somewhere else, and uh, so I'm making make your place exciting for you. And if you are home with someone who's retired, or out of work, if your husband is out of work or you're retired. I have great ideas for them too and one of the things that I like to do is I decided okay since we're since my uh, Mr. S is home a little bit more a lot of things that he used to go out and do and work with uh, and interact with were closed since he is home more then I am going to send him out with my list for supplies and for groceries and for many other things that saved me so much time I had not realized how, how big a chunk of the day going somewhere had had done and uh, I was just falling further and further and behinds and things and when I had to have a stress cleanup because some some event was happening or someone was coming I would just put a bunch of stuff in a box and shove it away that's what we used to do when we cleaned our car remember <laughs> and uh, uh, so I found out with him doing all that he was gone a longer time and he enjoyed it. He enjoyed being out and about, and it was good for him to uh, become familiar with some of the merchandise that I was needing, and also to check out prices, and it just was very stimulating for his mind. I've done it all for years and years and years, and gotten further and further behind. And things in this book, like I have a page about the walls, and one was remove wallpaper. That was written five years ago. I still haven't removed that old wallpaper. Well, with him, um, gone and me not having to do that stuff I uh, was able to, to catch up with some of these things that have been bothering me for years and years and years so that's a good idea make a list of things you want them to do and also I might include a card and a little box that I created of uh, tea things for someone I say drop this by Mrs. Mrs. so-and-so's house you know just put it on her doorstep I'll text her that that you'll be putting it there and so this keeps them out if you need to have them out so that you can clean a certain area of the house this is good there's also plenty of outdoor work to do there is plenty that they can do and uh, sometimes uh, Mr. S will ask me could you just leave, make me a list of things you would like for me to do they can't read your mind and they often aren't aware of what needs to be done so I always have that list ready so uh, and then I will put it in, uh, put little symbols on it as to whether or not it's really urgent. You know, like this could wait two weeks. This could, but then he might have time and do it all. And so uh, another thing that you can do with these lists is you outline your work. And that means that you make a list of what is the most important to you, what is the most urgent. And I always say, attack sanitation first are there dishes in the sink is there laundry that's starting to smell bad and the bathroom do those three things first make sure that they are the things because that will change the atmosphere in your home quite a bit and also get you going and the more you move I heard a years ago probably 19, around 1972 I was listening to a radio program back in the day when there was a I believe he was a naturopath and he had a regular program on the radio and I'd listen to him while I was doing some housework and he said uh, that many people at home 
dealt with demotivation and depression and he would tell them when they came to visit him to go home and move something. Just reach over and change something on an end table or clean out a drawer or clean out a cupboard. That movement, the hands seem to engage the mind. It'll make you think different and your motivation will come back. But in order to get some kind of motivation, you're going to have to go through with your notebook and go through to separate sections of the house, even if it's just one room, and say, what would make my heart leap when I look in this corner? What would I like it to be like? What would make me happy? What would I like to have happen here that would make me happy? And I, I draw on my uh, experiences and inner instincts and I always like to harken back to places I have been or homes that I have been in where I thought oh I like this this yeah this is what I want <laughs> and or you know even shopping experience I've had where uh, we've been in a place that's uh, really nice and I think I really like this merchandise I really this is for me and so what I do here's what you would have to do you want to say to yourself, okay, what, write it down. What would I like it to look like? What is the impression I want it to give me? What do I want to feel like when I see it? And how can I substitute for what I want? So one of the things that I do that you might like to do, and like I said, Lizzie, everybody, everyone is different. <laughs> Not everyone is going to be inspired by the same thing. But you know how I like Hoffman Media. They're the ones that produce... Victoria Magazine and Tea Time. Well, they have all these special issues, and I like to look through them, and you can order them sometimes for $5 if they're outdated on Hoffman Media online. I just like to go through things and look. I'll be sitting in a chair unmotivated. By the time I've been through a magazine, I will stop at a certain picture and think, hmm, I like that look. I think I'll go over there and fix that corner up. And I will just go through, like there's a desk right here, and find something that inspires you. Uh, go through some of these things to inspire you. Ooh, I want that house. And uh, not only that, but it lifts your soul. And there's so many, uh, these magazines, there's never a discouraging word in them. There's never any, there are never any, issue, quote, issues in their issues. So uh, here is a, I, I told you I like what they do to the, opening covers and the end covers. They always have uh, something beautiful on the back. There's nothing so beautiful, lovable, and moving as the English countryside. Well, a lot of us live in places that look like a beautiful countryside. I will include, I like to include every time some picture of the countryside here. So find a, get dressed, make a list, sit down, look through uh, some favorite, uh, some things that you haven't had time to look through and just sit there and dwell on the pictures. Now, the way we used to do it with our children, so kids, I'll just raise you today. <laughs> I'll just raise you. I'll just re-raise you. Um, uh, is we would open a picture and we would say, what do you, let me, we would point out to them what, what they should be looking at. What would be focal point? Well, there's a fireplace. There's a vase of flowers inside of the fireplace because obviously this is summer, you know, uh, and then there's a, a little wooden horse there. So we teach children to look. We teach them what to look, how to find details, how to look, how to look at colors. how to. So that's what I would teach you. But I have to tell you something interesting about this fireplace thing. I had an old book about the Victorian ways, and it was actually obviously someone who was making fun of the Victorian era. And they had gotten some uh, pictures. They had got some pictures from the Victorian era and some sketches. And one was a fireplace. Uh, which was empty, which had a big bouquet of flowers inside. And uh, the author was talking about how stupid that was. Didn't they know that that would catch on fire or something? I think they were just mocking it. But in the summer, that's what you would do. And, you know, I grew up with old-fashioned fireplaces. And uh, you, would stick a, you would stick something pretty inside of that fireplace because it was summer. You weren't going to use it, and it filled a bare spot. It, it was uh, comforting. So... That's what I would do, get those things out and start looking at them. I hope I have time to read uh, to you today. Actually, I hope I can read my writing. <laughs> so you get, and I told you yesterday that one of the challenges was to find something you hated doing and try to do it. Find a, a grim job to be done. <laughs>
And uh, those of you who know where that came from, you know what I'm talking about. Um, the other day I was thinking, it was one of those gloomy days that just didn't seem to, uh, lift, fog didn't seem to lift and it was rather gloomy. And I was thinking, what, what can I do to lift me and give me more motivation? And so I was outside walking on the path between here and the meeting house, between the manse and the meeting house. And uh, it was just a little gravel path. And there wasn't much growing there. And I decided to thank God for the gravel. <laughs> there was, just didn't seem to be much around to be uh, accelerated over. So I was thanking God for the gravel as I was walking along. And then this terrible mist and fog coming in. It was so dreary. So I was thanking God for the mist and the fog. By the time I got back into my house, I was just bursting with enthusiasm. So find something small that you want to be thankful for. Some little thing. And practice thankfulness because that is going to change your motivation. Thankfulness will always change your motivation. One of the reasons I think uh, it, we tend to lack motivation is of comparisons. Comparisons are deadly. You start comparing to some high-end house that you've seen somewhere uh, on a show or something and you start to feel depressed because in comparison yours is not. And so just forget about that and thank God for some small thing. Now, one of the reasons that I liked homeschooling so much was that I noticed that the books, uh, particularly the A. Becca series at the time, back in the 1980s, would stretch the child's uh, thinking, would stretch his, uh, you know, we always like them to have books that, at their age level, you know, so they can understand. But these were always a little above their ability so that the child had to stretch a little further just to get it, just to think of it. So that's what I learned in that was to challenge yourself to stretch your abilities and stretch your motivation, to stretch it a little bit. And I learned that also from the exercise programs that I've been following. And that is I could never ke uh, keep up with this instructor on the video, but she would say, do what you can. And then just rest and just do what you can until the next one comes along and uh, but try to stretch a little further each time so now I'm almost at the point where I can catch up with her so stretch a little bit but you have to also stretch yourself emotionally you have to stretch yourself spiritually and uh, so you have to stretch yourself in you have to stretch your motivation just stretch it a little bit Okay, so go through, go through your books, go through this stuff, and maybe even a book or two that you haven't had a chance to look at in a long time. And I mentioned Emily Barnes before because back in the 1980s, those were so unique to us. They were so beautiful. They were a lot uh, different, more, more beautifully um, illustrated, beautiful artwork and sketches and just uh, had a lot of spiritual values connected to homekeeping in the Emily Barnes books. And, uh, but then I thought, you know, maybe you wouldn't be motivated by that because Lizzie, everybody is different. But that was what we had at the time. And you might find something. Just go and look, maybe if you're going out, if you're shopping, go and find something that might impress you and motivate you. Sometimes a book would help. I know a book or a magazine would always help me. I always felt a little stimulated by it. And particularly Hoffman Media because they don't have ads in them and they don't have anything that would uh, be opposite of what they are trying to, to portray. So this is the challenge today is to make your list and uh, make a list of what you would like certain parts of your life to be like, what you would like your life to be like, what the impression uh, you would like your home to give you, and how would you like to feel in your home, and how can you do it? Take some steps to do it. So Now, one of the things I learned in, uh, in the exercise classes that I've been taking online, and they are uh, for over 50s, but I would recommend them for teenagers, that's for sure. Because uh, even a teenager, I don't think, could could accomplish it. But uh, 
one of the things that one of the instructors has said is that if you've been exercising for a long time, but you don't see any changes, you don't see any changes in your strength, you don't see any changes in your stamina, you don't see any changes in your mind or your weight, that a lot of it is from doing the same ones over and over. You have to change it off. Uh, and so this is the same thing with your internal motivation at home. You, you, we're doing the same things over and over, obviously. We get up, we have to look, check the dishwasher, check, you know, check everything else. We do the same things over and over. But what she said about the exercise, you have to change it up. You have to um, vary these exercises, change them around, not do them one right after the other, do from back to front, front to back, that sort of thing. And you can figure out creative ways to do that in the home so that you don't get, if you don't see any changes in your motivation, you might want to change things up a little bit. You might want to change your decor a little bit. It doesn't have to cost anything. You notice behind me I've changed my cushions on the on the couch. Um, and all you, I will switch things from a bedroom to the living room. I will use things in different ways. I just change things up a little bit so that I don't get dull and so that I don't lose uh, motivation. So ladies, uh, this might help you, uh, but everyone's different. So with exercising, it's the same as what I was explaining to you about these uh, these courses in homeschooling. Is they were just a little bit above the child's ability. Every grade was just a tiny bit above and just stretched them. And it was just a wonderful thing to see. And it challenged their intellect. Instead of them feeling dumbed down, they felt raised up. And this is the same, and exercise instructors will tell you this, that stretch a little bit every day and and be challenged to go up and it's the same with the home uh, change things around a little bit stretch your abilities at home there are prob there's probably a lot you can do so if you can't get started go through some of these publications it might help another uh, so I have three things today is to make your list and stretch yourself in that list make a list and not just the ordinary things but one extra thing now yesterday, I, or last video, I suggested uh, to find a grueling job and, and tackle it, something you've been avoiding because you don't want to. And I did that, and I, was, I found this one room that has been bothering me for years, and I just never have been able to really conquer it. And I was in there all day long. Uh, I've still got a lot of work to do in there, but I am making progress. So I did obey myself a little bit. Another thing you can do if you don't have any of these kind of publications and you don't want to order any, there is a site that I like to watch every now and then for inspiration. I'll be sitting down thinking I'm just going to look at something that just eases my mind, isn't doesn't have a, an agenda, doesn't have an issue, and it's called Princess Home. And she just puts a new video on there of the inside of someone's home. It's like touring. And I don't like all of it, but once in a while I'll see something and think, Oh, hey, I really like that. That looks like that place in my home. I think I'll try that. And uh, just, and also, I like to go through every now and then and find out how I can make it more usable and convenient and workable for other people. And that's why I set up the coffee and tea stations throughout the house so they wouldn't have to walk from where they were staying all the way through to another end of the house. And that has stayed there. If something works, uh, I keep it there. And then the third thing is clean up something and refresh something. So refresh an area. Refresh an area. Give it a fresh new look. So I'll write those down for you. And the way I did it with that one room that, uh, that was a grueling job to be done, uh, a grim job to be done, as Emma said, is that I used the uh, news, N-E-W-S, North east west and south and i started at the west because that was the focal point of the room and i did the west part of that garage i did it's a it's a garage turned into a bedroom that has a nice floor put in it and so i did but it's a storage room as well and i wanted to make it more uh, livable so i started on the west and i did the west and i'm going to do one of the others today when i'm when i'm finished um raising you so <laughs> And then the other thing I'm going to give you four things to do today is to exercise for five minutes. Go to YouTube and look up five-minute stretches or five-minute exercises. There's a, Fabulous 50s has a five-minute chair exercise. 
so that you don't lose your balance. I would recommend this to young people too, to children. I'd recommend those of you who feel awkward or, you know, one of the things I love about uh, doing it at home is the privacy of it, where you, you do, you're not made to feel you look kind of strange or because you can't keep up, but to sit in a chair and do exercise, there's more to it than you believe. Also, I meant to bring you my new weights. I had um, the one pound can of beans last time and I've graduated to a two pound can of beans so I can hold up two count pound cans of beans now. <laughs> so I've stretched myself. Uh, and one thing that this one uh, instructor, one thing I like about the new way that uh, exercise is going is that these are often taught by people who are physical therapists and who understand how the body works and how the muscles work. And that has been such a change for my mind. If you feel demotivated, go to some of these exercises and you're going to find out something really amazing. Exercise has not been taught very well in the past and they, they're more likely to exhaust you, wear you out and discourage you and leave you full of aches and pains. But these, but these new physical therapists understand how the body works. And it's what, uh, I read a book years ago about, um, it was about diet and it was not about exercise, it was about nutrition. And if I ever find it, I'll bring it here and read some of it to you. But it was how the core of the body determines your health. And so your waistline was what you would have to work on. If you could get your waistline back, you often would conquer uh, a lot of health problems through getting your waistline back. And uh, because your waist would determine, you know, getting it thin, getting it trim, would determine the, the, the rest of your health. And that was written way back in the 1970s. So there's probably more to it now. But these wonderful uh, exercise instructors encourage you to use the core of your body, uh, to strengthen the core of your body. That would be your waistline, your abdomen, your thighs, and other parts of your body to strengthen your arms, to strengthen your legs. You know, I used to lift things up and uh, my, my puny wrists would, would hurt and they'd get tired, my arms, and even attend exercise classes where my arms would hurt. But when this lady talks about using the core of your body uh, to hold up your limbs and then you don't get neck, neck aches, it, it holds up your neck, you don't get the neck aches and the back aches and things like that. This is what changed so much, but also if you will exercise five minutes, that's on your challenge today, then you need to take notes in your notebook, how you put an exercise page in here and write down if that has helped your motivation. Write down if that has changed your mind. It's interesting, like I said before, when you're moving things around, the hands engage the mind and you can come out of a funk. But exercise also can help you with your motivation. Just exercise five minutes in your chair uh, if you're not used to it. And now you have to understand that a lot of these exercise instructors, although they're very excellent, they will have their their uh, philosophy and they will have their opinion. And uh, sometimes I just turn it off, I turn off the sound and just follow the exercises. So if you're sensitive to some of the things that they say that you don't believe, um, they're not. Uh, they're not polluting or bad or anything, but you'll have to understand that. And don't let it stop you uh, from exercising. So make your list. Go through your books and your publications and or watch Princess Home and uh, get to get motivated and clean up something or refresh an area or change out something. That's number three. And the other one was exercise five minutes if you can't get started. So now, so now I uh, want to read something and I want to explain this. This is called, I can imagine everybody's going to shut this off the minute I say this, Barnes, Albert Barnes on the New Testament, 1 Corinthians. Okay, somebody gave this to me and I Never wanted to read it, just teeny tiny print, and I thought, you know, who would want to? But one day, I was not feeling very well. I had It's amazing how clear, uh, how much more clarity you can have when you haven't eaten for a while and you haven't, you're not feeling well, and how you can sink your teeth into something that's a little deeper. So I turned to something in here and, and read it, and I, I thought, you know, 
that's not too bad. So let me, it, he, what it is is he's commenting. It says Albert Barnes on the New Testament. Now he lived, I'm trying to think what year he lived. Um, I, I'm not sure what year he lived, but I'm sure he was like maybe late 1800s, early 1900s. Goodness, it doesn't say anything about his his own history in this book. Um, but it was published in 1949. Now, the word commentary triggers everybody. A lot of religious people will not use commentaries. Now, all a commentary is somebody commenting on something. So it just says Albert Barnes on the New Testament. He just comments. These are just his comments. It would be like our commonplace books that I encourage you to write a commonplace book and put quotes and remarks and, and thoughts in. You're just commenting. That's all it is. It's a comment. If you listen to a sermon, that's a commentary. They're commenting. They're probably starting out with the scripture and then elaborating a little more and commenting on it. So I'm a commentary. You're a commentary. And there's nothing wrong with commentaries unless, of course, you take it as a substitute for the Word of God. You're allowed to use commentaries. I like them because, especially if they're real old, because I like to see how they thought about things back in the day. You know, I'd like to know how they uh, thought, what they thought it meant. It doesn't mean that I'm going to go along with it. But if you're mature, you can understand a commentary is just a comment. It's not something that was ever intended to be the Bible. It's, and it's okay. I'd rather have people write their feelings and their, their observations uh, about the Bible in a book uh, than anything else, you know. Uh, so you have people that will reject uh, commentaries altogether. But if they're listening to a preacher, that's a commentary. Uh, so I don't, I don't find anything wrong with There will be things that won't be. It's just like the homeschool materials we used to order. I'd have to go through it sometimes and find things that I did not agree with that weren't entirely sound, in my opinion. And I would say to the children, well, that's that book's um, view of it. But you don't ever use uh, anything like this in place of God's Word. So now that I've covered myself, I'm going to read about Barnes. Now, Albert Barnes, everybody's heard of Adam Clark, and everybody's heard of some of these others, but Barnes was one I wasn't really familiar with. and uh, But I really enjoyed it. So I want to read this to you, and it was from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, and it was in the first verse. It says, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but charity edifies. Okay, so here's what he has to say about some of this. So I thought you might like it. And I've been talking nearly 40 minutes. I don't know if I'm going to go a full hour. I sure hope you're doing something and not sitting here watching me. So here's what he says. Mere knowledge or science, when the heart is not right, fills with pride, swells a man with vain self-confidence and reliance on his own powers, and very often leads him entirely astray. Knowledge combined with right feelings, with pure principles, with a heart filled with love to God and man may be trusted, but not mere intellectual attainments, mere abstract science, the mere cultivation of the intellect. Unless the heart is cultivated with that, the effect of knowledge is to make a man a pedant and to fill him with vain ideas of his own importance and thus to lead him into error and to sin. But charity edifies. Love, so the word means, and so it would be well to translate it. Our word charity we now apply almost exclusively to almsgiving or to the favorable opinion which we entertain of others when they seem to be in error or fault. I think you can remember that from old uh, old books. You know, we, we want to act, they wanted to act charitable towards someone. That just meant being kind towards someone they didn't agree with. That's what charitable was, you know. The word in the, or, or when they would say of a character, she wasn't very charitable. It just means that uh, she would not, um, she would not kind of roll with the conversation and, and be tolerant of other people. The word in the scripture simply means love. 
It says here is knowledge is not an entirely safe guide and should not be entirely trusted. Love to each other and to God, true Christian affection, will be a safer guide than mere knowledge. Your conclusion on this question should not be formed from mere abstract knowledge, but you should ask what love is to others. To the peace, purity, happiness, and salvation of your brethren would demand if love to them would prompt to this course and permit you to partake of this food, it should be done. If not, it would injure them. Whatever mere knowledge would dictate, it should not be done. The doctrine is that love to God and to each other is a better guide in determining what to do than mere knowledge. You know, that's like people that just want to follow a law and they don't they don't bend at all according to the person or you know having a, having mercy in a heart towards anyone. You have to follow this certain law. Uh, and they don't give any uh, grace grace to the, to them at all. It will prompt us to seek the welfare of others first and to avoid what would injure them. It will make us tender, affectionate, and kind, and it, and it will better tell us what to do and how to do it in the best way than all the abstract knowledge that is conceivable. The man who is influenced by love, ever pure and ever growing, is not in much danger of going astray or of doing injury to the cause of God. The man who, you know, we all know these people that are religious fanatics and they just rail on and on about, uh, about uh, religious things, but uh, you, you don't really warm to them. The man who relies on his knowledge is heady, high-minded, obstinate, contentious, vexatious, perverse, opinionated, and most of the difficulties in the church arise from such men. Yeah, ego is always a problem, isn't it, in any group. Love makes no difficulty, but heals and allays all. Mere knowledge heals or allays none, but is often the occasion of most bitter strife and contention. Paul, sometimes, you know, you get somebody, we would get someone in our living room that wanted to argue a point about something, and I would sit there and, and notice that some people would get rather heated about the point and just want to win the point, but they didn't really care about anybody, really. It just had, they just had to win the point. Paul was wise in recommending that the question should be settled by love, and it would be wise if all Christians would follow his instructions. So I thought that was interesting, although, you know, things written in the 1800s are a bit wordy, and they use words that we don't use anymore, like the word L-A-A-L-L-A-Y. -A -L -L -A -Y. I think it meant, means uh, put off. But I just thought I would read to you because I thought that was interesting. And it's like I said, in homeschooling, we would just get a bunch of books. We were all dependent on books, so we would find them anywhere and just set them around as reference books so they could pick them up and read them. But I think this the whole thing about that reminded me of Mr. Darcy in Pride and Prejudice when he was explaining to um, Elizabeth about how his personality had gone astray, had gone shipwreck. And he said, as a child, I was given good principles, but left to follow them in pride and conceit. <laughs> and so... I thought that might kind of go with Albert Barnes on 1 Corinthians. Now remember, it was just a comment that he was making. And um, so I wanted to talk to you about something that I found. I didn't bring it in here with me, but years ago I had, it was before my children were born, I had written this little booklet. And I don't know why I did it, but we used to, we had an old IBM typewriter and we would type up booklets and then we'd staple them together. And it used to be like half a piece of paper stapled together. It'd be two or three pages. And I wrote a book called How to Over About Overcoming Depression. And I must have been in my 20s by then. And I don't know why I, I wrote it, but I I never thought much about it. And I found it the other day. And because you know I've saved everything since 19 whatever. <laughs> and and what I had done, and I didn't know I had been that smart at one time, but I had gone through. The Bible and found major uh, people in the Bible that were had suffered from a discouragement. I'm not sure, you know, they were deeply depressed or anything, but they had to suffer from discouragement. Some of them had started stopped eating and started fasting, and and they were just entering this phase of depression. 
And exactly what had happened was in every single case from the prophets, from Moses to Elijah to on, on to the Apostle Paul, uh, God had told them to do something. And they, uh, one of them was complaining that uh, he'd done all this stuff and no one, there was no one but him around. And uh, God uh, would tell them to go and do something. Go into the city and it will be told what you must do. Go here and tell these people this. Or get up now and go lead the people to this. And so I had written just a few pages of all, and categorized all these characters and what happened when they became depressed and what God did. And he told him to go do something. Now that sounds really um, materialistic and it's not appealing to their emotion. And I think that with homemaking especially, we have to learn to get up and go do something when we don't feel like it. If you let your emotions rule too much, and I, I agree, emotions are really good for the homemaker because she's got to have, she has to go by instinct, she has to go by what it feels best to do at the time many times. But when it comes to de not being motivated, I would say the same thing that um, that God had told all these people was to get up and go and do something. So that is the most, whether you just have to force yourself because I don't think anybody's going to pick you up and go and make you do it. And I don't think the feeling sometimes will come back until unless you make it that way. Now, the more sitting you do and the more uh, lounging you do, the more easily it is to get into a sense of demotivation or depression. And I learned that from some of the exercise classes that it does affect the mind, that some of these exercises do affect the mind, and you can bring your motivation back. At the same time, I don't think that you should think that we should be feel constantly energetic or constantly motivated. There's a time to sit down and have a cup of tea and, and not be motivated and not, not do anything. But of course, we want to leave our homes in good condition so that others are not burdened by them. I know we have broken up housekeeping of several of our elderly relatives and it's a big burden on a family especially if they're raising children and they have meals to get and and they have their own home to look after so we want to make sure that we are conscientious about that so we don't put a burden on other people and I heard about one grandmother who's uh, who had passed away and when her family went to break up her housekeeping we call it break up housekeeping here I don't know what you call it in other places but they went to you know go and get her things and get her house cleaned out and everything was on a list as to who what went to who and the names were on the bottom of some of the furniture and some of the books and some of the other things she had named all the people in her life her children and grandchildren where where those things were supposed to go and who they were supposed to go to and so i thought that was a great idea i don't know if i will ever do it but i wrote it down in my book <laughs> i'm really good at making lists I can make long, long lists, a hundred things to do and end up at the end of the day not doing any of them. But the list help organize or put my mind, my thoughts in order, these swirling thoughts and all the things that have to be done. The list is very helpful. Getting dressed and getting dressed up is a big motivator and making a list is also a big motivator. My problem with lists are I make this wonderful list and I feel so good about it that I almost think I've already done it and um, sometimes don't. But today, I'm going to tackle that grim job, and I'm going to do my challenges. And my challenges today were those four things, which I will write down for you. I wish this could be a little bit longer, but I didn't have uh, anything else that I brought to the table here. So ladies, I hope that you will take these, these challenges. I learned those from the exercise. I go and look for an exercise, and it will say, you know, three-day challenge. And there's also homemakers that will do challenges too, cleaning challenges. You might want to look those up too. I like the younger uh, women who are doing homemaking challenges. So I've noticed some things about them that I never never have thought of doing. I've mentioned this before. They will, when they're going to clean out something, will um, empty out a container and clean the container, put everything back in the container and put it back in. And that's the way they'll do their bathrooms too, they'll empty out everything and clean it all and then clean every little item that goes back in. And we used to do that as teenagers when we took the time, when we had more time. Well, now that so many people are home, you might have find yourself with a little more time to do something. One thing you want to do if you want to keep your motivation high is not watch things that, that upset you. 
that drag you down, that make you feel slow and depressed. So only look at what's good, lovely, and pure. So ladies, I hope this will get you through. Uh, well, you'll be through at least uh, 50 minutes. I didn't quite make it to an hour. So I hope you'll get something done. And I'd love to see what you wrote down. Uh, you want to leave a comment? I don't have comments on the channel. I'm making these for my blog. And uh, I don't have a huge following, but I don't want it. I just want enough to get in my living room if I were to teach you personally firsthand. And if we were to build one another up, we would only want as many as we can get in one room here. And so that was that would be what I would do anyway. I would I normally wouldn't have a thousand people, so I'm I'm content with ten or twenty. And uh, this is not for everybody. It doesn't. Everybody has their own taste. There are plenty of other homemaker sites you can find and follow, and be inspired by. So I hope you got a lot done today, and I'll just see you next time. Bye.